it feels like everybody has a podcast these days. Ironic, because I am recording a podcast episode right now. I've thought a lot about podcasting as it has become a very popular form of media. I personally love podcasts and I have been interested in the podcast scene myself. Podcasting always sounded fun to me. I've always had a lot to say in general, but get me talking about the right topic and I will not shut the fuck up. But as somebody who has loved to talk, I have had my hesitations with starting my own. I've been analyzing why it's been a little bit harder for me to lean into the podcast scene. And there's a couple reasons why. There are so many podcasts out there now. I don't feel like there's anything that I have to say that hasn't already been said. And I don't think that I can say it any better. Like, I just don't think we need any more. So why am I making this podcast? As somebody who loves podcasts and as somebody who has heavily considered starting their own and has friends who have their own podcasts, I think about this a lot. I have tried to lean into the podcast scene. When I started, I kind of noticed that it wasn't really working for me. I didn't feel that I was articulating myself in a way that accurately represented what it is that I wanted to say. I didn't like the way that everything was kind of coming together. I didn't like the way I was articulating myself, basically. Even right now, I'm like, what the fuck am I saying? It's been eight minutes and I don't think I've said anything because I can't put together the thoughts that I have in my brain into speech that feels like I'm saying what I actually wanna say. I mean, that's probably just a byproduct of like not being articulate. I definitely really admire people who can articulate themselves really well. And I think a part of my inability to do it confidently is rooted in probably the fear of being misunderstood. And as much as I think that I've worked on this, it always comes back to that. There's just a certain uncomfortability about talking about something when you know it's gonna be put on the internet. And I also kind of found that I didn't have anything to say. The reason why I have been interested in podcasting in the first place is because growing up, I've always had a lot to say, but the older that I've gotten, the less I feel like I have to say because the less I feel like I know. And I kind of feel like I don't have like a place even to talk about certain things. Cause I don't know, like I'm not a fucking expert on anything. I don't have any credentials. I mean, I have a degree in psychology. So, I mean, I guess there's that, like I can't discount myself for that, right? But like, I'm just a girl. <laughs> like why would anybody want to listen to what I have to say? Like, I feel like I don't have anything meaningful to add, which is not true. I think that's just something that you tell yourself to diminish um, your capabilities, which that's not good. <laughs> and I hate that I even say that about myself because a part of the reason why I enjoy podcasts so much is because I'm hearing other people talk about their own life experience and their own perspective on something. And it's interesting and refreshing to listen to somebody talk about something that I maybe cannot relate to or maybe an angle of something that I can relate to through a different lens than my lens. And I think that's why podcasting has become such a big thing because it's a way for us to connect with each other on maybe a little bit more of a meaningful level than typical social media. I don't like that I feel like what I have to say is not as important than other people who feel like they do have a place. A part of this is also, there's so much media already out there and I feel hesitant to add to it because I feel like we're all so overstimulated and always plugged in that I'm like, I don't wanna add to that. It's not that I don't have anything meaningful to add actually. It's that I don't wanna add to the junk that is online. And it makes me think like, if I don't wanna add to the junk, then I just won't say anything at all because there's nothing that I can say that hasn't already been said. It all kind of connects. It kind of feels contradictory for me to say that I don't wanna to add to the junk and then also add to the junk, which is why I haven't formally started a podcast. Like I'll do this on my YouTube, 
but I don't have like a Spotify or like anything like that. I don't do this consistently. I try to only do a podcast when I feel like I have something to say. And even then it's like, are you really adding anything meaningful to the fucking zeitgeist? If I am going to do this, I want it to add something of value. (sighs) So that's my dilemma. At the end of the day, whenever I do these, I love it. It's actually so fun and it makes me feel good. I get excited about it. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to do it so often that I'm unable to filter through like the junk ideas that I get that may not benefit somebody. I don't ever want to waste somebody's time. You know what I mean? I feel like content today is just, this is going to sound so annoying. I feel like it's just an attention grab. Like people just want the view, which I'm not saying that I don't, but I don't want the view enough to not think about what it is that I'm posting. Like podcasts or anything else. Okay, I'm gonna correct myself a little bit. I recently watched this video by this creator where she discusses drowning in entertainment and she goes into the history of when the telegraph was invented, which affected how quickly information could move from one place to another. And eventually people caught on to the idea that certain one-liners were the things that got the most attention. So it's not just today that content has been just for an attention grab, but nonetheless, it's even more prevalent today because there's so much more at stake. I try to be as intentional as I can about what it is that I'm posting. If I don't feel like I'm expressing myself in some way or adding value in some way, I don't want to post it. I myself feel so overwhelmed by the amount of shit that is online now and I myself have a fucking online addiction. It's so bad. And I feel like my addiction to social media and content is not even as bad as other people's. And so I don't want to add to this like overconsumption of online media. It's just like this weird back and forth that I've had in my head about, okay, I enjoy podcasting. I have some stuff to say. I think I have some meaningful things to add. But at the same time, what can I say that hasn't already been said? There's nothing that I feel like that I can say that hasn't already been said. But at the same time, that's not true because nobody lives my life. I'm the only one living my life. And there's only one me, (laughs) which sounds so fucking corny. I'm the only one who has the experiences that I have. I'm the only one who can express my own perspective and the things that I've been through. And if online community can tell you anything it's that there's always somebody that can relate to you and there's always somebody that you can impact it's that idea that there's a niche for everything nonetheless what's important to me is making sure that i'm not just posting to post although it's okay to do that i'm not saying it's not okay to do that i would just prefer to be mindful about what it is that i say because we are so plugged in all the time, it's harder to filter through the junk content, the empty calorie content. It's just not good for us to always be consuming and to not even think about what it is that we're consuming and even not even thinking about what it is that we're putting out there. That's been my main dilemma with podcasting. I really do enjoy it. And I especially love consuming podcasts because it makes me feel less alone. It makes me feel heard and understood and supported. And if it makes me feel like that, then I'm sure there is somebody else that might feel the same way about the things that I have to say. I get stuck on the idea that what I have to say has to connect with everybody. It's really easy to be misinterpreted online. And so I want to articulate it in a way that can be widely understood. But that's just not possible. It's not possible to be always understood in the way that you intend on being understood. What's held me back a lot from maybe saying things candidly is the awareness that I have that somebody is going to misinterpret something that I say. Because everybody is living life through a different lens. So if I'm articulating a certain thing or a certain experience or a perspective that I have through my lens. Only people who have 
a lens similar to mine can understand what it is that I'm trying to say. If somebody who doesn't have overlap with my life and my experiences, it's going to be harder for them to understand what it is that I'm trying to say, which is natural. That's so natural. Also, the prevalence of online bullying, I was going to say cancel culture, but it's actually just online bullying. I think there needs to be maybe a distinction made between online bullying and accountability, but that's more geared toward a deeper conversation surrounding cancel culture as a whole, and we're just not talking about that right now, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt. It's so scary. Like, I, I feel like we've forgotten, or we've just really removed ourselves from the connection that what you say to another human being has an impact. Like just because what you're saying is not directly to another human being doesn't mean that it doesn't affect that person. Like we have really removed ourselves from our humanity when it comes to sharing shit online, I feel like. It makes me sad and it also makes me scared to share my experiences and my perspectives because I've seen how ruthless people can be online and how disconnected people are with their humanity. It sucks. It sucks. I mean, I understand. I feel like I understand why life is hard. This world is unfair and cruel, as horrible as that is to say life is also beautiful and stunning and gorgeous and there's so much good about it but at the same time like that's not to say there's a lot of suffering and that people are not suffering and i understand that people kind of take out their shit online it's not an excuse but like ultimately is it not the reason why people are mean online because they have shit going on internally in their own lives that they feel like they cannot express or get out in their real life so what they do in turn is take it out on people that they don't know online because there's ultimately no consequence my nose is getting really itchy so just ignore that it's like getting kind of red sharing your experience online is scarier than it's ever been so when i'm trying to articulate something i want to be as neutral as possible I want to make sure that I'm considering every possible perspective. I don't want to unintentionally offend somebody or hurt somebody, which is just not possible to do online, unfortunately. I feel like we've forgotten that it's okay to be different from each other. In fact, it's actually good to be different from each other. And I also, in the same vein, somehow feel like we've forgotten that we're actually, all of us, are a lot more similar than we think we are. We're far more connected to each other than we think we are. And I don't know what it is about the internet or content that makes us feel so disconnected and so separated. It's just this like crazy back and forth in my brain of, I have stuff to say, there are things that I want to say, and I think that there's certain things that I have to say and want to say that can be of value and at the same time there's nothing that I have to say that hasn't been said there's nothing that I have to say that I can say better than what's already been said and my perspective isn't gonna add anything I don't want to add to the empty calorie content but at the same time doing this is fun for me I get excited about it it makes me feel good especially when I feel like I've done a good job it's just like two things existing at the same time which is something that I also feel like we've collectively forgotten. Like the way that we kind of react to things on the internet, it's very black and white. There's no gray area online, which is scary. I feel like us being constantly so online makes us forget that it's okay to be different from each other. Okay, I keep using the word forgotten as if we have been able to understand our connectedness previously, but I'm like, did we ever even think that way? Because from what I can remember, when the age of the internet first started happening, when social media first became a thing, I remember us just being so kind and supportive to one another. But also, I could be glorifying that through a sense of nostalgia. So I'm kind of like, 
maybe we never really had a deep understanding that we're all connected and it's okay for us to be different. I, we haven't forgotten anything because it's never been that way. There's nothing to forget. After I came to terms with the fact that I was not loving the podcast that I was putting out, I decided to take a step back and evaluate, sit on it, let it marinate, think about it. More recently, I have re-entered the podcast chat very casually. No commitment, super casual. There are some things that I've been reflecting on. I think that it can definitely help me be more articulate in the way that I would like to be. Practicing talking, practicing expressing ideas, experiences, and opinions through speech consistently is helpful. The more you do it, the more you do anything, the better you get at it. Even if this whole fucking episode might not make sense, even if the episodes that I've done in the past might not make sense, the more that you do it, the easier that it's going to get and the more I'm going to learn. Nobody can ever get better at anything if you don't practice. So this, in a way, is practice for me to be more articulate, especially through speech. I've gone through my entire life with social anxiety. I literally didn't talk when I was in first grade, second grade. Like, I did not talk. I didn't talk at school. I only talked to my family. And my teachers were like, there's something wrong with her. <laughs> my parents like took me to a therapist and everything. I'm sorry, my nose is so itchy. I mean, this was like not normal behavior for a child. The most I would do at school was whisper to my friends. Like, if a teacher called on me in class, I would literally just not even answer. I wasn't even able to ask to go to the bathroom. Like, this is so ridiculous. But in first grade, I had to pee so bad and I was way too scared to ask to go to the bathroom. So I waited the whole entire school day to pee and I got so close. I was so close. We were getting up to get out of school and I had to pee so fucking bad. But since I had been holding it the whole day, I literally could not hold it any longer. And we were all getting up, getting ready to walk out of the fucking classroom. And I just couldn't hold it. I literally peed my fucking pants in front of the whole classroom. That's how bad it was. That's how scared I was to talk to people. And my parents did kind of take me to see somebody. I got like a rough diagnosis of selective mutism. I mean, I was like six years old when this happened. So like, I don't really remember. This is just like a story that I've been told. Um, I vividly remember peeing in front of my whole fucking class though. I remember that part. But in terms of the whole, my parents taking me to somebody, like, I don't really remember that. This is just what I've been told, but they took me to a psychologist, a psychiatrist, and I was given like a rough diagnosis of selective mutism, which is a child anxiety disorder, but my parents were afraid that if I was officially diagnosed, then schools would hold me back or put me in a special class and my parents didn't want that for me. So ultimately they did nothing about it, which sounds shitty, but like, I can't blame them. They thought they were doing what was best for me and there's nothing that I can do about it now, but that's not to say it didn't come with its own repercussions. Obviously I'm fine. I started talking, like we're all good, but I have gone through my entire life extremely socially anxious. It took a long time for me to be able to talk to my peers and talk to my teachers and interact normally in very casual social settings. It's gotten better throughout my life. I haven't like been to therapy or anything. It was just something that I had to learn how to handle on my own. But as a result, I think that it's caused me to suffer in how well I am able to articulate myself. So I think that podcasting can help me become more articulate because ultimately what it is is expressing a story or perspective, experience or opinion that I have through speech, through talking. Throughout my YouTube journey, one thing that has always been present is the fear of being misinterpreted, is the fear of cancel culture and how fucking ruthless people can be online. I've really just had to come to terms with it. Like A, nobody is hating on me right now, okay? Oh, stop. I don't even have enough people watching me to get hate. B, I cannot let 
the fear of people hating on me and misinterpreting what I have to say hold me back from doing the things that are right for me. I need to live life for myself and I need to do what's best for me and what makes me feel good. And if doing this is something that makes me feel good and it's something that I feel like can benefit me and also benefit other people and add value to other people's lives, like why would I not do it? Because fear because of limiting beliefs. No, those are not valid reasons for me not to do something. I've had to come to terms with the fact that no matter what, people are going to misinterpret what I say. And that's okay. It's okay. It's okay to be different from me. It's okay that for me to be different from you. We don't all need to be the same. That would literally make life boring. It would be so boring if all of us just agreed on everything and had the same experiences and didn't have different perspectives on things. Even if what I have to say may not add value, may not be interpreted in the way that I would like, it's inevitable to cater to everybody. It, you're not supposed to do that. We're not meant to do that. It's not natural for everybody to love you, for everybody to understand you and for everybody to relate to you. It's just when you have access to like quite literally the whole world right on your fingertips, I think that's what makes us forget that it's okay for us to be different. We don't all need to be the same. We don't all need to relate to each other. I hope that we can learn to accept each other's differences better in the online space specifically. It's helped to see like people who are in the public eye that I really admire deal with them being misinterpreted. Like we watch celebrities and influencers and people who have a lot of attention go through periods of like really intense online bullying or cancel culture. I just can't help but feel horrible. <laughs> Like when I read those comments, it makes me sad. I'm like, oh my God, if I was this person and I was receiving all these awful comments about people making assumptions about me without understanding the full context, like I'd feel like shit. And people misinterpreting a situation because we only get what we see. And it's so easy for us to draw conclusions off of what we think we know. I mean, it's also just kind of fun, right? It's kind of fun to like look at what's going on in somebody else's life and speculate and gossip. It's fun. And it's like so natural. You know, it's like a, it's a natural thing to do that as a human being. Our brains are just built like that. If there is not information to fill, if there is lack of information to fill about a certain situation, our brains are going to fill it with our own context. And that will ultimately shape what we think about something. So I understand why people say the shit that they do. I understand the root of it. I understand where it comes from. And so I think understanding it has helped me come to terms with it. Obviously, I don't face like that level of scrutiny on the internet. So it's like, why am I going to hold myself back when I'm not even getting any hate, bro? Like nobody is misinterpreting me. I'm just afraid of that happening. I'm sure the people who I love to listen to also have struggled with the fear or discomfort of somebody not interpreting their story in the way that it's meant to be interpreted. Because if there's anything that the internet has taught us, there's always gonna be somebody who doesn't understand and there's always gonna be somebody who can relate to you and who you can help. Another thing that held me back was that I felt like whatever it is that I said and posted, I had to like stand by forever for the rest of time because once on the internet, always on the internet. And I'm somebody who thinks a lot and thinks about things a lot and likes to take my time forming an opinion. And that results in me changing my mind. I might have an initial impression of something. And with a little bit of time, my perspective can change. When you're making a podcast, you are expressing how you feel or think about a certain topic or situation at a certain time. And that's not to say that that perspective can change in the future. And so previously I felt really anxious over the idea if I said something and posted it, then I would need to stand by it for the rest of time and I wasn't allowed to change my mind, which affects the way that I would articulate something because if you're trying to articulate something really specific in a really broad way, 
it just doesn't really work. Like you can't articulate something complex in a vague way, which is what I was trying to do. It all comes back to accepting not everybody is going to understand and not everybody has to understand and the right people will understand. So as I've done this, I've learned to be a little bit less attached to what it is that I'm saying in the moment because I'm allowing myself the room to change my mind. It's really weird to publicly say something and then change your mind about it later because it's like, oh, well, two years ago you said this. You don't believe that anymore? Like, no, we're human. We're supposed to change. We're supposed to grow. Of course, something that I thought when I was 16 is not what I think now. And seeing public figures being held to that standard is scary. Being an online personality sometimes feels like you have no room to be an ever-evolving human being. In general, I've just been enjoying making these more and making them helps with, I guess, the limiting belief that I have about myself where I don't think that I have anything special to add or anything of value to say. The reasons for me not to do it are not valid enough for me to not do it. If it's fun for me, if I enjoy it, and if I am able to add value to somebody else's life or bring comfort or any kind of positive impact to somebody, why would I not do it? I can't let fear and limiting beliefs be the reason why I don't do something. I've found a level of peace that regardless, people are going to misinterpret one another and it's natural and it's okay. We all have a different lens in which we experience life that shapes our perceptions and not everybody has to have the same opinion and not all content is made for all people. Sometimes something on the internet is just not for you, so you don't need to engage. Let the people who it is for enjoy. My nose is fucking so itchy if you've been watching this and like my nose is fucking bright red. I don't know why this happens to me sometimes. My nose gets incredibly itchy. I haven't even eaten anything today and usually it happens when I eat something like potentially it's an allergy. I have no idea. I mean, I did have a coffee with oat milk and vanilla. So maybe it was that. I don't know. It's always something random. Anyways, I really fucking hope that I articulated myself well, although I don't think I do. And I'm definitely going to have to rely on my editing to have this make as much sense as it can. Regardless, I appreciate your time here. And... I really hope I don't waste your fucking time. I probably will also be adding shit. I probably started a lot of thoughts that I didn't finish that I'm going to want to finish as I'm editing. That's usually how it goes. Okay, I'm out. I'm done. Talk to you later. Bye. I really enjoy making podcasts. Wait, that's a fucking lie. Hello. Other people more articulate than me have already said certain things. What? What? Did that? That did not make sense do podcasting I guess stop a guessing no the amount of people that are each individually living what am I trying to say (coughs) I'm so sorry